Hey, Corey here, the art archaeologist. So here's Black Pearl's kit too, all dried and ironed up. And these are the colors I used for this kit. I just added pearl gray to this kit and um, I ended up with a ton of purple in this kit, a really, really nice hues and tones of purple, and I didn't put any purple in the kit. So I noticed in, if you watched Black Pearl's Kit 1, I did not have any of the gray in that kit, and I got a lot of tones of purple in that kit too. So when you're dyeing paper, the grays, the blues, and now the black will bring tones of purple into your kit. I, it's just, you know, of course these are formulated for fabric like I always say and it just ends up different with um, paper. So I went ahead, I wanted to keep the gray really light and bring some extra contrast. So I only used about 15% of this and then I used about 15% of this or 10 even more like 10 and then I used about 40% of the teal because I really wanted a lot of teal in this kit and it actually <clears throat> excuse me the teal actually got quite washed out which I was very surprised and slightly disappointed to see but the colors still ended up really beautiful now this kit just like black pearls kit one was folded in half because i wanted to get some more mirror image pages and then um that allowed me to use the smaller watercolor um, sandwich sheets for the ends and then this is canson watercolor paper nine by 12 cut in half so i've got two six by nine pieces here and then i've got the canson mixed media paper for the center sheets and of course these were folded in half to make half of eight and a half by eleven so what is that four and a quarter by five and a half so these ended up a little smaller than these so i could get the little border i love to get so this was the outside um, sandwich sheet and, and then here's the inside with the little border. I said in um, Black Pearls Kit 1, I had these little star-shaped leaves in my yard and they were all kind of dying off so I grabbed a few. And of course those spots happen from the leaves aging. So I'm gonna, I want to grab a bunch of these at the beginning of next season when I'm doing all natural dyes only and see how those fare when they're um, a little younger because the older leaves get of course then they get spotty. Here's a grapevine leaf and this is the outside of this sandwich end. I'm pretty sure. Actually this I think is the inside. You can barely make out the border there. So yeah, that's this is the inside page. And then here's the outside. I've been having much better results lately with my outside pages. I really stack the leaves thickly between the grates and it's been paying off so um, there were a lot of areas in this kit where the teal did not blend well and uh, I'm not sure why but you get this speckled and it happens all the time when you're dyeing paper with writ dye it is part of just how it comes out so look at this this to me is really purple i don't know if the camera is picking up the color like i'm seeing it but there is so much bluish purple in this kit and it's incredible to me because i just didn't put any purple in and i'm sure this is really mostly the lighter shades of course are coming from the pearl gray and the darker shades are one I think they're coming from the maple leaves because I always get purple from the maple leaves no matter what color dye I'm using and I think the darker tones of purple are also being enhanced by the black dye so now here is this a completely different um page in the same exact kit because this page is predominantly teal so really incredible from this 
to this all being in the same kit, just something else. And then this, of course, is the mirror image to this watercolor sheet. And uh, for those of you that have been watching my channel, this is old news. If you're new, um, it's amazing through the kits that I do, the color changes that you will get from the watercolor paper versus the um, Canson mixed media paper because these were literally together with the same color of dye sandwiched throughout this page and look at the difference. It's just incredible. So um, if you want to try doing it the way I do it, I, I do recommend it because then you protect your inner sheets and you get those wildly different results and it's just so fun to see that for me. Here's my mirror image of this sheet. I knew these were going to come out a little darker because I was using the black, but I, I just wanted to go ahead and risk it because I love the teal so much. And I saw a really cooked page in a recent kit. I can't remember which one. And it had maple leaves on top of this black background, and it just looked gorgeous. So it inspired me to do this black dark kit see look at this now I picked these leaves up they were on this bush and um, they were like the last ones these were the last guys standing and so I grabbed a few of them when I was out running errands and they the detail of these is really nice too so I put a bunch of feathers in here and I try to keep all the maple leaves on the same page together or to at least put them in different areas if I'm mixing them with other leaves because they come out black an awful lot and it can be, you know, then it can turn that page into only being able to use that element. So this leaf here really came out beautiful and this is a cottonwood tree leaf here and they do a beautiful job. They're very similar to the aspen leaves. Here's the next mirror image, and this was from that vine that I got those. It's not the, this is the grapevine leaves I use, so it's a different species for sure, but I was extremely impressed with the results of how these print. I love these bubbles. A lot of these bubbles are a result of spraying the alum. I actually sprinkled a lot of dye on, and then after I did that, I came in and gently squirted a little alum, and it really paid off. So I hadn't done that before, and I'm really glad I did it here. So once you get your botanicals and your dye and everything on your page, you can come back in and just give a tiny squirt with your alum water bottle. See how dark these maple leaves are? This is why I've been just putting them together. And this page is so overpowering. Uh, I'm not all that thrilled with it. It's just almost too dark to use. But it's got a value with the drama. Here's that grapevine leaf. These just never disappoint. And then a beautiful feather in here. Lots and lots of texture in these kits, the black pearls. Now here's a page that's mostly teal, and that this was how it didn't get washed out. If I only used the teal, it came out, you know, quite quite blue, actually, which was a surprise too. So uh, you just never know what you're gonna get. Oh, here's these grapevine leaves. Aren't they incredible? And then all of this spotting, of course, is a result of the leaves aging. Now, here's a bunch more maple. And then if you look up here, this maple leaf ended up with a bunch of yellow in it. And then these ended up, this one definitely ended up more black. So you can get some color variation out of your maple leaves too. But it's such a gamble. You just kind of have to count on them turning black on you because you will definitely get some black out of your maple. It's inevitable. 
this is a really fun mirror image here. I am surprised that this little star style flower petal shaped leaf, it almost printed identical, which is very rare. You know, usually you get the back side and the front side of the leaf like here. This is what I'm talking about. You get this massive difference. So to see these come out as similar as they are, and these come out as similar as they are is really a surprise too. And then of course I put another little feather in there. Lots of color variation in this maple leaf and this one up here too. Really, really nice color variation. The bubbles again from doing the spattering a bit of the um, alum water. Because I soak my page. I spray it down pretty wet to begin with with the alum water and then I put a layer of dye and then I put the botanicals so what I did in these last two kits was I would do the squirt the alum do the dye and then I would come in with the alum again and then put the botanicals on first and then other pages I just did the dye put the botanicals on and then squirt it a little so you can do it either way it's a fun little discovery that I just didn't occur to me to try it before these kits right here so I'm really glad that I did because the bubbling came out fun it's not everywhere in here but it's it's in a few spots. Now these, the thing I love so much about a page like this is that, okay, it was folded, so the mirror image of this are, are floating around in the kit. You have the mirror images to everything. But when you go to print a page like this, you can put it in a journal and you can make your signature and then these get split up the mirror unless you put it in the center of the signature so you can break these pages up beautifully and then this can end up being page one and then this can end up being page 16 depending on how big you make your signature so to make it even though the page doesn't go together like this it still makes for a gorgeous journal because you're going to fold it and then you're going to end up with these complete pages throughout your journal. So, oh, so fun. This page really came out pretty. I love the teal color. I'm just, I was very, very surprised at how washed out the teal got when I brought in the gray and the black. Here's this mirror image, another fun one. So, and then these make, I think, personally, they make really fun center pages in the journal because you get to the middle of the signature and it's like, oh, oh, it's a mirror image, you know? And the really good ones that are really graphic make for great um, center signature sheets. Oh, there's another grapevine leaf. These just never disappoint. They have such beautiful detail in them. And then I sprinkled a lot of these little stars and maple. And um, these stars as well, these little, I don't even know what to call these. They're really cute. They just spring up out of the ground in a little tiny bush all together. But a lot of these come out black too. So it's such a gamble. And then here's some aspen leaves and they are incredibly aged. And they get aged spots just like people, I guess. Kind of funny. There's that one. And then we've got this last sheet here. So this is the drama I was looking for by um, you using black in this kit. I really wanted to come up with these highlights and it really came out very, I, I love it, I love this. I wish I would have got more like this. But again, you just don't get to pick. And then here's this lovely little mirror image and it looks like the die pooled right here. So quite a fun little page there. And then here's the very end of that kit.
So thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this kit as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to click that button and click the bell notification too, so that you can be alerted to all the fun projects that I'm going to be making with these eco dies over the winter. Thanks again for stopping by and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.